Hello everyone, welcome back to the Papa Me channel. How you doing, how you doing? Come on in, sit on down. I am kind of drunk. I'm in New York City. I don't have to tell you I'm in New York City. I'm just here, okay? But I did go and just see Winnie the Pooh Blood Money 2. And much like when we did our Junji Ito Netflix video where when I was in my Airbnb and we talked about the video, I thought it'd be applicable to do that here now. Because it's impossible, but they somehow made the first movie look even better than the sequel. I do have a list here of things that we had to write down during the movie. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Which I do want to say the movie did begin with the director and the actor and co-writer director who plays Christopher Robin in this movie talking about the lineup of films they have coming out which is essentially they're doing a Bambi one the actor who plays Christopher Robin in this movie is directing a Peter Pan one <laughs> and then also they were ecstatic to talk about the Pooniverse you think I'm joking but that's literally what it's called this is a where he, they said they, they said they were a fan of Avengers. Isn't that fucking crazy? They would say that. He said, "I wanted to make a movie where they came together because my inspirations are Black Phone and the, and the Avengers." Imagine going to make a movie and your two references, your two, your two references are Blumhouse's Black Phone and then Marvel's, Marvel's Infinity War. And we did, and then they, they had the director of the Bambi movie come out and he said, we got a sneak peek of it and you basically, you basically just saw a 3D deer flip over a car. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, whoa, <laughs> this is sick. But there's a, there is a couple different things I want to let you know is that in this movie, because the first movie made like a billion dollars and they made the movie for like, I think a thousand dollars or something. So in this one, it's just like a list to go off here. The pros is that I would say it's better shot. It's super dark though. It's very dark. It is very, very dark. But I will say that like there's more little mass last time and they, they probably just asked for like a commercial fee use. So they just, I think they specifically got costumes for this one. So I'll give them points there. And there's way more gore. I remember in the first one, there wasn't really anything like that. But it, what's insane is that you, you hear these perks and you would say, oh, so it was a step up. And no, it's insane. As a brief, if you just don't give a shit about this video, let me just say, you could go in this movie and not even have seen the first movie. And it would be fine because they retconned the entire first movie. Because the way they explain it, which I'll go over here again in a bit. But the way they explain it is that the first movie is an actual movie in the universe that they made about Christopher Robin because people believe he is a serial killer. The first movie we saw, this is, reminds me a lot of Endgame, which is cool, but the first movie we see is a made-up movie in this universe, and I'm wondering if it's because they recasted Christopher Robin, so I'm wondering if they're like, oh, we're gonna get new mass, we're gonna get a new Christopher Robin character, so I wonder if we should just say, like, this was made up or something, which feels like a really fucking stupid way to go about this, and I will say, too, I don't know if we want to include this in the video, but the people who made Made this movie did reach out to us and asked if we wanted to interview the director and I don't think we responded I mean what what am I supposed to say dude hey uh, so like are you stoked about like, I I have no idea so we went into this extremely biased I would say because I did not like the first movie but it's insane because I walked out being like I would have just have rather watched the first one again in the grand scheme of it all so without the without further ado let me give you a break by a breakdown of this and I'm gonna try my best to re recollect this we were drunk and laughing in the movie theater so I tried my best but here we go so the movie does start off with Christopher Robin basically being called a liar like I said right so the whole thing is that there's like new animations this time of because in the first movie there was the animations talking about why <laughs> Pooh and his friends were pissed and in this movie there's animations being like all of the things <sighs> dude it's so fucking convoluted it's like all of the events in the first movie are technically true but people don't believe that the woodland critters did it they just believe that Christopher Robin killed these people and it was, it's called the Hundred Acre Massacre or whatever. I, we just had to keep going because I don't, I, there's so much stuff that ties in later that I'll complain about. But after the animations of that whole beginning intro, which was basically like a giant anime exposition dump, it cuts to a camper where three girls are hanging out in a camper doing a Ouija board. <laughs> and... <laughs> 
and uh, the owl from Pooh and Pooh attack the camper. They like look over and the door's open. They're like, close the door. And then she goes over and Pooh like comes out and he stands in front of the door and he like smashes her hand in the door. So she's like freaking out. And then the owl stabs through the wall and kills. Or no, he just stabs like it a just, bar. Uh, rebar. It's just a rebar, yeah. It's like some piece of metal and it kills one of the women. And then Pooh lifts up the camper and <laughs> Pooh lifts up the camper. Which I will say, you know some immediately how much better the masks are. They're much, much better. And even the owl, the owl looks like the Jeepers Creepers monster a little bit. And he kind of has like a weird, like theatrical black swan, black feather. He looks more like a raven. I wouldn't really say owl. That's just being nitpicky. But Pooh basically flips over the camper and causes a fire for some reason. And the girl is burning alive inside the camper. And then the other girl swims out and she's like, no and then her leg gets caught in a bear trap. And then this was one of the funniest. I honestly, I don't think I've laughed so hard at the beginning of a movie before. I'm really trying to re, I mean, me and Nick were laughing so hard. At the beginning of this movie, the girl is crawling away in this bear trap screaming. Pooh goes over, breaks her leg, and then her left arm, and then her right arm. And then he takes the bear trap, puts it under her head, and then stomps her head into it to where it like cuts off her head, which is like, there's way too many. I, I, I can't even believe I'm saying this, but there's way too many beheading scenes in this movie of Pooh like grabbing a head and being like Ugh. oh yeah and then like the girl who was on fire is like crawling out of the water and she's like all mangled she's like melted she's like melted How, what happens to her she like owl goes up and says some cryptic shit oh, oh yeah owl, oh, oh yeah owl, <laughs> owl basically sounds like the all state guy and he's just like I think he says something like, who's the freak now? Isn't that what he says? Yeah, he says, who's the freak now? And then he kills her and then we, you get the title card. So that's the title card intro to the movie. And we cut to Christopher Robin who is in therapy and is acting extremely nonchalant. So we're led to believe, it's hard to kind of follow actually. You're led to believe that he is in therapy dealing with something that happened a year ago. So it's only been a year difference between what we saw in the first movie and this. And between then, between a year ago and now, in canon universe they've made an entire movie <laughs> <laughs> about what happened and like people have died. I mean like it's it's been a whole crazy thing and he is extremely like nonchalant. He's a very chill guy. It's almost like it didn't really affect him is how it seems. But he's like in this weird, I, I would say it's comparable to the mom and get out. Like they're trying to do that with the, the, the therapist trying to like hypnotize him in a weird way. But I I don't know, I, it, it doesn't really, obviously it doesn't read, but. Oh yeah, and, and then and then in the time frame too. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to make sure I get all this. Christopher Robin is also now a doctor, a pediatrician. They let a supposed murderer, like everybody in town thinks he's a murderer and they let him become a pediatrician. And so he is wanted for murder, kind of. And he got, it became a pediatrician. Just wanted to put that out there. A girl drives him home, like a girl that is his friend. It's not his girlfriend. It's very, you can tell they like each other, but she's just like, hey, let me give you a ride home. He's like, no, I'm gonna need you to leave because people hate me. And she's like, I don't care, Christopher. Also, they're all very British. I don't care, Christopher. Just get in the, get in the car and let me drive you home. Home. And he's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he goes home and then his dad, there's like a very, very awkward interaction between him and his dad. Like they hug awkwardly and he's just like, I love you. <laughs> he's like working with, his dad is working with his friend trying to fix Christopher's car, I think. Oh, spray painted with murderer. Oh yeah, someone spray painted murderer on Christopher's car and his buddy was helping him wash it off. And his friend's like, well, I gotta go to work. And his dad's like, well, I didn't want you to see this, Christopher. And he's like, it's okay, dad. And he, he walks inside. Spray paint on a car, it would be extremely hard to get off. I mean, it's like, you need like a power washer. But when the dad gets down, he starts wiping it off and it like wipes off immediately. You could tell they did not want to fuck with this rental car that they had, which is pretty nice. Oh yeah, so, but then we, after that scene, we immediately cut to three hunters in the forest who are looking for the creatures. Like they believe that the creatures do exist and that like one of the victims from the last movie, I think it's one of their brothers or dads or something. And they're basically like, oh, they're here, I've seen them. And we cut to, you see the owl flap above and it just looks like kind of reminds me of like I don't know if you guys ever saw like when I was younger we had the sci-fi channel and that's where they played all of like the really shitty cheap horror films it was giving me like a sci-fi channel horror rendition it was they did also they I don't think they filmed one scene in actual night I think that the entire night sequences in this movie were all day for night sequences because they think that they're Jordan Peele and nope and that they can get away with it <laughs> you know but it's weird so we saw like the, the owl go but then we noticed that Pooh Piglet and the owl are 
in an underground base under a tree. Pooh, Piglet, and Owl are talking, and Owl says that they have to kill Christopher Robin. So that makes sense from the first movie, sure. But in the bottom bunker of this tree, there's also a vault door, and you hear, like, growls, and that's supposed to be Tigger. And it's led to believe that I guess he's, like, they can't control him. So you would say something like, we're gonna have to resort to, like, letting him out. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have to resort to letting Tigger out. It'd be so cool if they just kept his voice. He's like, ah, I'm Tigger. I'm gonna have to bounce up and down. I'm Tigger. Piglet ends up attacking the hunters from before, but one of the hunters just, sh like, shoots his head off. Fuck off. He, like, walks into frame, and they're like, oh, the monsters are real, and then he just gets his head blasted off. Which was a funny beat, but Pooh comes out and kills one of the hunters. And what's weird is like one of the kills is he stabs one of the hunter's rifles through his head. So like the barrel of the gun, he like jolts it through his head. I don't know, it was just like, it went through his skull. It went through, so his skull. It went through which I get it. It's like, oh, he's a big powerful monster. But I was like, I don't know, dude, just like rip his head off or something. It just feels weird using like a blunt object like that. Instead of beating him to death, it's like it impales him. I don't know. Basically all of the guys get killed except for one guy who gets his face mutilated by Tigger and they leave and the guy like kind of wakes up in the morning he's like alive somehow and he just passes out and then we cut to Christopher Robin giving a child a shot in the hospital and you're it's just confusing he's doing his best patch Adams he's doing a patch Adams Robin Williams thing for sure but it's just weird that it's like a person where an entire town believes that you were the reason that seven people were murdered and it's just weird that they would let him be a pediatrician in this town because then immediately after this he get, does the shot he gives the kid a shot he's like oh, you were a brave kid and the kid's like okay and then he walks out into the hallway and his boss is like i'm sorry but people just don't like you you're fired and he's like oh okay <laughs> and it's like all that kind of uneventful and he sees the guy who got his face mauled and he it's the movie is dark in terms of lighting, so it's hard to see things, but it's also quiet in certain lines, and also it's like horrible British accents, so it's just fucking hard to understand anything. Especially one character later in the movie has a Scottish accent, almost impossible to understand what he's saying. <laughs> I digress, but they like are moving the body past Christopher, and he's like, oh, I know that guy! is what he says, I know him. And you're supposed to be connected to that somehow, but it's like, is it just a small town where everybody knows everyone? But I don't know. Um, he doesn't interact with them at all. Well, yeah, it's like, he's like, I know him, but there's no follow up to that. He's just, they're like, okay. And he's like, all right, well, I'll see you guys later. It's not, it's not even him being like, oh my God. Cause I would say in a lot of movies, this is the part where it's like, they're back. You know what I mean? Oh my God, the hundred acre, magical animals are back and he'd be freaked out because not even 12 months ago his girlfriend that he loved in the last movie was murdered he was tortured held captive and tortured and was saved by strangers and like barely survived the last film but now it's supposed to be like he just doesn't give a shit he's like oh well okay uh <laughs> Christopher Robin goes back to his house. Someone loaded the dishwasher with like, it's like a really weird thing where they like pulled the dishwasher open at Christopher Robin's house and there's like 20 knives facing up and the mom's like, keeps loading the dishes wrong, which it's like obvious foreshadowing, but also this is just the old man in me, but no one puts knives in dishwashers. It doles the blade. I know that's like very nitpicky, but when I saw that, I was like, if my, if my wife caught me doing that, she I would be up shit creek so fast for real, so. Well, that's when Chris Rock and uh, Chris Rock and Chris Robbins goes upstairs, and you find out that his sister is playing with a bear doll, but the bear looks like it's like guts are ripped open, and it looks like a fucking nightmare toy. And he's like, "What did I tell you about going in my room?" She's like, "Sorry." And then uh, he's like, "Yeah, mom's pissed because you loaded up the dishwasher with the knives wrong." She's like, "Sorry." But then we're led to believe, I'm like, "Do they just have the ch the four year old child load up knives <laughs> into the dishwasher?" And essentially, uh, you could tell that they have like a cute relationship, I guess, because he's like joking around with her, but then also his brother went missing a while. Do we know about the brother yet? That's the next therapy session. Okay, all right, so we're not there yet. I really can't emphasize enough though that through these scenes, he's very chipper for someone who was on the verge of death not so long ago, but it's like, he's it's, it's kind of inconvenient and they're trying to show that he's a little tortured by people not liking him in the town, but otherwise he doesn't really bring up like his past girlfriend getting mutilated, him being held hostage. It's just, he's way too chipper. We cut back now to a father and son who are bird watching. And they're, it's like another vignette where it's supposed to be, he's like going around, he's like, which bird is that, son? He's like, it's a cardinal. He's like, very nice. Why don't you give me one? And he looks at the trees, you just see the owl like, <whistles> he's like, Ooh! 
it. I don't want to play this game anymore, Dad. And he like runs off, and the dad, in like an After Effects, like Windows Movie Maker style, just gets picked up by the owl in the background. And then you, uh, to show that the dad died, they throw a Spirit Halloween arm and leg into the river, and Pooh and the owl are on the bridge, and they are watching the legs go by. And they're like, we fucking need to kill Christopher Robin. And Pooh's like, <coughs> And the, uh, the owls just keep saying like, whoa, we're gonna get revenge. It's like, over what? I guess last time Christopher Robin kind of fucked up their scenario, but like, it was- Owl wasn't even in the movie. Owl wasn't even there. So it's like, did Pooh just be like, hey, Christopher Robin did this to me and now he's holding a vendetta against him? Or I guess in the first movie, to clarify for people who haven't seen the first movie, Christopher Robin like abandoned them. In the first movie, that's why they were mad. They were abandoned and left to fend for themselves and they became evil having to fend for themselves. Which is also kind of funny to think that like a child was protecting or feeding them or something. Yeah, that was the whole thing. He stopped feeding them and they had to eat. They ate Eeyore. Dude. <laughs> they ate Eeyore. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> they did. But that doesn't matter because we get to see Christopher Robin's next therapy session, which in the next therapy session, we find out that he had a brother who was abducted as a child. And it's almost a shot for shot beat of the Five Nights at Freddy's child being abducted. And now it was like, we're getting eerily close into Five Nights at Freddy's territory. It's weird. It's just like reminiscent of Get Out. I can only think of Get Out of like when the mom is like tinkering with that coffee cup and he's like helpless, but we just find out that yeah, on one of Christopher Robin's birthdays his brother got abducted and he's like oh well, I don't know what that means but okay and we cut back to the friend who picked up Christopher earlier and she's babysitting a kid who is dressed in a Freddy sweater and he has a hockey mask on where we're like <laughs> Freddy Jason and his name's Freddy and his name is Freddy and the little kid is watching Blood and Honey 1, the first movie. And I think that's, like I said earlier, I think that that's just to clarify and make sure that you know that like, oh, that's why Christopher Robin's actor is different. That's why everybody looks different is because it was a movie, which is just so annoying. It, it, it feels so cheap, doesn't it? Or what do you think? No, it's definitely cheap. Cause it's just like, instead of just ignoring it, they're just saying like, oh, that was a movie. The events really did happen, but that the movie is a movie within this universe. They're in the house and she thinks that she hears somebody breaking in. So they run off and go into a giant pillow fort in the corner of a hallway. And they use a drone car, like a webcam attached to an RC car, but it's like never really established. Which it's not like the technology is that weird, but I still think that you should establish like, oh, the kid's tech savvy or what? I mean, just who has a fucking camera on an RC car? The car had also teeth all over it. And the car had teeth. For why? To make him like a serial killer. Oh, he's like evil. He's like, oh, I like horror films. So Pooh comes in and you see him on the monitor and he smashes the car and he goes upstairs and basically they trick him and they run outside and cops are outside. But then you cut to a deputy who's on the property with them. And they're like, oh, there's a monster inside and it's a barn detached from the house. And Pooh just like picks it up and like rips off her arm and shoves her arm in her mouth. And she's screaming and people know that it's happening and they do nothing about it. Isn't that weird? Yeah. There's like six cops. I'm like, why is no one going to help this woman getting attacked in the deal? The cops show up at the fort and they see like all the dead bodies in the fort and one of the cops is the other one. We have to bounce. We got to bounce and then Tigger says, that's my line. That's my line. We cut back to Christopher and his mom who are talking about their brother being kidnapped. I mean, the dad comes in and sees it. Yeah. So the mom and Christopher are talking like he's like, oh, I just remember that he was abducted, whatever. They're talking about their brother, his brother getting abducted, right? The dad walks in and sees his son and wife talking and he goes, oh, I'm sorry for interrupting and like leaves. And, it, and they're like, no, you can stay. It's like, <laughs> it's just weird. It's like, he's in your house. You're, that's your son. You can talk to him if you want. Christopher says to his dad too, like, I remember what the kid, what happened, you know, and the dad says something funny like, look, Look, I don't know if this crazy hypnotherapy is going to work, but it does. So I support you going to it. So before that, he was like, you're going to a fucking weird, like magical doctor or something. Oh yeah, so then now Christopher Robbins starts Googling different crimes that happen in the area. And it's one of those things where you're like, why didn't you Google this years ago? Like he's like on Wikipedia and stuff, looking up different crimes. And it's like, thank God you just now started looking up how your brother could have been abducted or something. Also, he's like highlighting two words at a time. Mysterious disappearance. Yeah, it's like he's highlighting things and he's like, Mysterious disappearance. Several people abducted? It's just like, 
It's fucking stupid. And then the next scene, he's like going with his friends to a nightclub where they're going to be throwing a giant party, but he's asked to leave because they're like, hey, we think that you're going to murder somebody. And he's like, no, it's okay. I get it. Yeah, it's so weird because he goes to the nightclub and it's like, they're just setting up a future. I mean, it's like just shitty foreshadowing, right? But then even after that, immediately after he gets asked to leave by the person throwing the party, he just goes to the hospital where that guy got his face ripped off from earlier. Remember that guy? I doubt it. And he sits down and the guy just writes, you were right on a whiteboard. And that like sends Christopher off to being like, oh, what is going on? And then there is a man standing. This is unbelievable. This is all just coming back to me. There's a man standing looking in the room at the guy who got attacked and the guy's like, he like walks off and Christopher's in his car the next scene and beats the man outside and follows him home, goes into the man's house, goes upstairs and it's a Scottish guy and he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you for abducting my brother. And the Scottish guy's like, I didn't know what I was doing. And it's like, oh, so you were, the, you're the guy from 25 years ago who abducted my brother. And he's like, oh, we, I did it because a crazy scientist said he'd pay off me debts, me gambling debts. And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, I didn't know what he wanted to use for him, but he was gonna, he started genetically splicing them with animals. And you're like, oh God, who is going to be Christopher Robin's brother? And these animals that are attacking people are actually genetically modified kids that were abducted, which is also just like black phone which is what they said they're inspired by and it's also like the five nights at freddy's thing so it's just like oh god it's so stupid. The guy gives a little preamble, like a, or I say little, but this guy gives like a 15 minute exposition dump of stuff going on and like why the doctor did it. And then immediately after he's done, he just shoots himself in the head. He was tortured. And I feel like, and I feel like it's like, couldn't you have just told somebody else or it took you this long to just be like, I'm gonna kill myself now. It's tortured me for too long, right up to this second. I could have taken it any other time except for now. Because also it's kind of funny, the janitor guy, the Scottish guy's like, I didn't want to go to jail because I had a wife and kid. So I killed the kids and buried them. <laughs> <laughs> but they're alive now. So I'm guessing that Pooh and them are mad that they were killed and genetically modified, but it just makes it really stupid because it's like, why would they be mad at Christopher Robin? He left them. Why, why would they be? Yeah, he left in the first one, but you're kind of like retconning that. But they don't ever, it's, it's, it should be more like you should be pissed at the people, like the doctor who fucking mutated you. By doing that, they make it super convoluted and they change the dynamic. But before they were just like weird magical creatures that are upset that Christopher for Robin left them. Pretty simple, but in this one now, it's like, are we supposed to sympathize with these people that are just killing strangers left and right because they were abducted as children and then grew up to be murdering animals? Like, do I care at that point? Also, why wouldn't Pooh just walk back and be like, hey, I'm your son, they genetically modified me? Because they, that's another thing they do in this movie is they all speak English. Like the owl's like, Rrr. Tigger speaks English, Piglet speaks English. I think the only person who doesn't talk is Pooh, except later. Yeah. He says one line. He says one line in the whole movie, and we'll get to that. So after that, Pooh, Tigger, and the Owl go to a rave, and they're standing outside. It's like kind of a costume party. So they're trying to do a thing where it's like, oh, they'll walk up and no one will know. Like usually the thing is you have people go to like a crazy costume party. So then like you could have like Jason or Michael Myers walk up, and then people are like, oh, well, it's a costume party. How would they know that he's a killer, right? But they go outside the party, and the Owl says, it's time for you and Tigger to have some fun. And Pooh just immediately walks walks up and kills them, goes inside, chases a woman who's running in slow motion, throws a bear trap at her head and rips her head off and then just kills everybody. So to me, I'm like, why did you even make it a costume party? You know what I mean? Why was it a costume rave? Like there was girls tits out. And I wonder if it's just to have tits in the movie. Well, they were all bunny girls. What does that mean, though? What do you think that means? Predator and prey. Also, do, the, do, the daughter, do, the sister's name's Bunny, which also we forgot that they stole the sister. Pooh goes back to, oh my God, Jesus Christ. Pooh goes back to the house, kills the mom with the loaded dishwasher that had like the 25 knives, which there's nothing to say that Pooh doesn't know that that's his mom, which we don't know that it's his parents yet, but still it's like, there's no reason to think that he doesn't have the cognitive ability to remember that that was his mom and dad. But the dad is talking to Bunny upstairs and you just hear the mom like screaming bloody murder. And he's like, what the hell? Daphne? It's, it's anytime I've ever heard my wife freak out about something, usually your gut reaction is to sprint to wherever they are to see how they are. He's like, what the heck is, 
Okay, well, I guess I better go check out what your mom's doing. And he murders both of them, even though you should know that that's like your parents, but they didn't do anything wrong to you. So I don't know if they're, he's trying to do like a Michael Myers vibe, but even then it's like Michael Myers is almost like a representation of pure evil. In some incident, like the Rob Zombie one, which is whatever, the parents are like kind of absent and like treat him wrong. So it feels not necessarily justified, but you can understand how he got there. But this one, it's like you were just abducted and we didn't know where you were. So I don't know. But they really didn't also seem too worried about that either. It's not like that didn't really seem that was weighing on them. He kills the dad, Christopher Robin's mom and dad, and then he kidnaps Bunny, his sister. And now when they're at the party, he's going around killing people at the rave, and Tigger is also killing people at the rave. And Christopher Robin shows up to see, because he knows that like his friends are at the party, so then he wants to stop Pooh, right? I don't even know why he showed up. I forgot why he showed up. He's he like, went to the, he went to the house and he's like, Bunny's gone. And then he just appears at the party. I just know that Chris Robin's also driving around and he like gets a, a tape from the doctor that is apparently a mad scientist. And he's like listening to things and it's like a very cheesy, like, of course the experiment was, is going to work and they have regenerative abilities. And like, he's talking, he's like, it's another exposition dump about like how the genetic splicing is going well and how they have regenerative abilities and they're becoming more more animal-like. Basically, he, it's just like a giant like dump being like, hey, when you kill them, they're probably not really dead for later on in the movie. We also, there's one scene where Al throws up on Christopher Robin's friend. I almost forgot, I forgot about that because it's so useless because we see that friend twice in the entire movie and it, I guess it's just to set up a kill for him. So then it's, yeah, the owl throws up on Christopher Robin's friend and kills him and like melts him, but it's like a callback to Cronenberg's Fly movie. But it's like in the fly, flies actually throw up and dissolve food. So it makes sense versus owls don't throw up acidic material that would melt somebody's fucking face. So it's like, Okay. Remember the owl also says, there is no God, before he pukes on the guy. Is that supposed to be a shout out to 20 days of night? <laughs> when the guy's like, no God. Whatever that part in the movie. Please God, please. No God. I don't know if that's supposed to be a weird thing like that, but uh, at the rave too, Tigger is like attacking all of these people and he keeps saying bitch like over and over again. I don't know if that's a callback to Freddy, but even Freddy, he says a line like once, but he doesn't back to back say stuff. He keeps just saying like, you stupid bitch, whatever you say, bitch. And it's like, okay, we get it. He, all right, well, yep, there it is. Oh, he says dance, bitch. That's another thing Tigger says. Dance, bitch. Ugh, it's so fucking stupid. He keeps like swiping at people and he's like teasing somebody. And then I think Christopher Robin stops him, right? Oh yeah, Christopher Robin shows up with the gun that the janitor from earlier that killed himself with. Christopher Robin shows up there and shoots Tigger once. And then he like shoots like <laughs> three times. The gun only had four bullets in it apparently. And Tigger just runs off and we don't see him again for the rest of the movie. This is the climax. We're getting to the climax of the movie. <laughs> There's also the scene where, this is before Peter comes out, but the friend, he stabs a friend and then she's like, Christopher, you're right. I'm sorry. I thought you were a murderer. You, you could have went to a party tonight. Oh yeah. Yeah, the girl, the girl who's, <laughs> a girl who's getting killed by Tigger was like, oh, Christopher, you're so right. The girl who said that he should leave earlier. The woodland critters are real. You should have been able to be allowed to come to my party. And she just gets fucking killed. She holds on to Tigger's leg, I think. Or she holds on to Pooh's leg. No, she holds on to Tigger's leg because then he's able to shoot him or something. I don't know. She gets killed and it doesn't fucking matter. She gets killed. When does Pooh come back in? It's right after that. So that's the last time you see Tigger after he gets shot. You see the owl fly once. The owl flies away and you don't see him again for the rest of the movie. And then basically Pooh shows up and he is tussling with Christopher Robin, but then he grabs a chainsaw and starts chasing after him because it's supposed to be a Texas Chainsaw Massacre callback, except this time he is chasing him out and then Pooh sees his own grave and that's when Christopher Robin comes to the conclusion that his brother who was abducted is the genetic animal who is Pooh now. And then Christopher Robin just stabs him in the head, but right before he stabs him in the head, Pooh says, oh bother. <laughs> And it's like he hits him in the head, but the head is already split open, so there's really no effect to it. And Pooh falls into his grave. And literally, the girl that was the babysitter from earlier, and the girl who was like his friend from the beginning, and Christopher Robin make it out of the forest to a cop who takes them. And he's like, oh, by the way, I found your sister. She was just in the woods. And then it's like, okay, so now the sister's here. And there's like an off-brand like Post Malone song that plays. And it literally, that's the end of the film. A couple seconds after the credit scene goes, you cut to see Pooh 
who's sitting in his chair from before with his head split open, and you see Piglet's head, because remember Piglet got his head fucking blown off <laughs> at the very beginning of the movie. His head's regenerating, and the owl is like, I'm gonna bring them back. And it's like, oh, there's gonna be a sequel, which is so fucking stupid, because it's like, imagine after every Friday the 13th film, you see Jason being regenerated, or some guy's just like, but he can come back, he can regenerate, so actually this isn't the last movie. And also it's like, dude, we just heard you talk about the next six movies you're gonna make. Obviously, like, yeah, they're gonna come back, we know that. So embarrassing. And like, there's a lot of things I skipped over. I mean, it was, so, I, I feel like I just had a panic attack recalling that entire movie. But it was things too where it's like, they definitely had more budget, the kills were better in this one, but there was no impact in any of them. It was kind of one of those things where it's like, as soon as an action's getting ready to happen, they cut away because they don't, I don't think they have the actual skills to, like in Terrifier 2, you're gonna see him stab somebody and rip open their head because they have like prosthetic artists who built something specifically for that kill and it looks awesome. Just like all these other things, like all these movies that they're trying to pay homage to, like Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, you have all these movies that do amazing actual, you see the impact of it, there's weight, it feels like it has, uh, yeah, just weight to these kills, but instead it's like, you feel like somebody who thinks that they know how to film a horror film, but then whenever they try to actually execute it, it just comes off like weightless, none of it feels real or believable, and also, I mean, it's a parody movie of like children's IP. I live in that cringe too, so listen buddy. You're gonna get asses in seats, but it's it, it, it's not good. I think that like, he needed to have somebody who knows how to film action, or knows how to film these deaths, because these are just unbelievable. And it's kind of like one of those things too, where it's like whenever you see a horror film and it's like, you pull up to the house and it's on Stephen King Drive, where you're like, oh, I know that horror, horror guy. It's like too many homages. The movie doesn't even have its own identity. It's just a fan film for other slashers, and that's boring. I think that like slashers will always be fan films to each other because a slasher film is not original. But what makes it so fun is the recipe of what makes a slasher film. Kind of like a good example is this movie called Hatchet from like 2008, I think is when it was. It's the same kind of bullshit you would see in any other slasher film, except the movie just rules because they got a good, weird antagonist character, Victor Crowley, I think is his name. And then you have some people that are likable protagonists that get to run around and they get picked off one by one. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, but whenever you like reference the wheel and you're like jacking off the wheel the entire time, it just feels extremely distracting. And it's weird too is how convoluted this movie is. It's like making them like genetically altered children now to where am I supposed to feel bad for them? Am I not supposed to feel bad? They're all just kind of dickheads who have no remorse for anything and there's no humanity left in them anyways. So it's like, why even go down that route? Versus the first movie, it's just kind of like a whimsical little like, oh, they're magical critters that made friends with a kid and they were obsessed with him and now they're pissed. It's like, I would rather have the first one, I think. In the first movie too, it's like, you could have done all of this, but just be like, oh, they would just want me and Christopher Robin could be like, I need to give myself to them because they, everyone I love is being hurt. But they just snuff him out really early in the beginning and then it follows like all of these other characters who's like, who even gives a fuck about them. And it's a cringe fest, but I feel like you could have like made the weird Christopher Robin version where he's like, oh, I abandoned in them, blah, 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 and gone that route. It would have still been fucking stupid, but at least it would have been a lot easier to track. So I don't know. As we speak right now, it's at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I have a feeling by the time I wake up in the morning, it is going to be much, much right. lower. And much like the Marvel films, there is going to be a fatigue for this kind of shit extremely quickly. I imagine it'll probably still gross money, but I think it's gonna be, you're not gonna be able to do this much longer. I can tell you that. But the Puniverse. Yeah, the Puniverse and the Bambi and they're doing Pinocchio. And what's weird is they were like, at the beginning of the film, they were like talking about like things they wanted to do in it. So it's like Pinocchio, he's like, so we were gonna have, he's gonna be able to use his nose to kill people and he's gonna kill somebody and drape his skin over his wooden body so he feels like a real boy. And they're both like, <laughs> And it was just a huge cringe fest. In a way, I was like, well, I mean, they're having fun doing it, but I don't know. Why show that at the beginning? I well, mean, that's what I mean. It's just I, a high, also, the credits, they just had pictures. Of the well, yeah, then during the credits, it was nothing but concept art. And it was concept art that they showed before in like the pre screening of the movie or like that little like interview thing they did at the beginning. But they're trying to build hype, but it also, it just felt fucking weird. It feels really weird and I guess formulaic. Like it almost feels like, as I guess back in the day, it's like, you know what you're walking into with like a Friday the 13th movie. But I think there's like still a level of Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th are 
are fun because you like the main character, you like the main bad guy. You can tell there's inspired ways of which they're going about killing people and like making it a fun experience. It's the same movie every time, but they're doing it in a new way where you're like, yes, this is just what I want. Versus this feels like, and then we have this IP and we're gonna do this and that. And it feels weird because I do that with parodies, I guess, and it makes me feel really bad about myself. <laughs> makes me feel like just such a huge piece of shit, so I don't know. All I gotta say is it was funny. I had a buddy message me and he's like, I was like, hey, I'm getting ready to see this. And he just said, this is all a byproduct out of people hate watching stuff. So I'm a part of the problem. If you don't want this shit to happen, don't see it is all I gotta say. If you don't give a fuck and you just wanna watch the world burn, I still wouldn't see it. I don't think it's worth it. Go see... Lay Down with the Devil. Yeah. Stop Motion. Those are two great horror films out right now. If you're watching this now and you're like, what movie should I see? Go see Stop Motion. It's really fun. It's really cheesy and formulaic as well, but at least it's way more original and fun. And Late Night with the Devil fucking ruled too. So those are two movies I would definitely shout out right now. I liked both of those movies a lot. So Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. That shit fucking sucked. Uh, and when Pooniverse comes out, uh, you'll see me hanging from the gafters. You'll see a, a chair kick out from under my feet and I'll sway in the wind is what I gotta say. All right, I maybe don't put that in, but uh, I don't know. It, is, I'm, there is no rating. Oh. It's a bad movie. I'm not going to rate it. All I'm going to say is that the first movie was better, but the first movie was fucking dog shit too, so there's your rating. Negative fucking 1,000 out of 10 versus negative 999 out of 10, as it was before. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Fuck you. Shorty wanna run, bottom in the club.